the archetype files, the wish granter archetype. It's the strangest thing, all the usual events that occur after an archetype is defeated happened. She turned to dust, my hand glowed purple, and an emblem appeared, this time of three white stars, but no powers? Doesn't add up. The fairy as we call her since we have no idea of her actual name, is what I like to call a wish granter archetype. Fairies, along with jinn, genies, and other creatures of that nature exist to serve their master, often imprisoned or confined to specific rules. The most famous wish granter is the jinn from Aladdin. Originally a Chinese story, it actually features two jinn as opposed to the more popular singular one we see in media like Disney's Aladdin, both animated and live action. The jinn in the original story are confined to both a ring and a lamp, an item the master can physically wear or hold to showcase their power over their new wish granting servant. Is this story based on word of mouth fables and also Aesop's fables that popularised the idea of be careful what you wish for because you just might get it, which is also a line in an amazing song by the Pussycat Dolls. This concept takes a wish made by the wish maker then twists it in often cruel and unusual ways in order to teach the character a certain moral. In the animated Disney version, Aladdin's wish to become a prince almost jeopardises his chances of being with Princess Jasmine because he wasn't being his true self. In other Disney classics like Pinocchio and Cinderella, the wish granter takes on the form of a fairy dressed in blue. These wish granters are not as hands-on as Genie, acting instead more like mentors that only show up when and if they're needed. It's actually Geppetto's wish for a real boy that grants his puppet life, but Pinocchio is the one who has to prove himself in order to become a real boy. The moral of Geppetto's wish being that you need to earn what you desire most, otherwise it will not be the best it can be. In Cinderella, the titular character has already proven herself when she's granted her wish to go to the ball, but there's still a twist. Her wish can only last a certain amount of time. This brings us back to the rules which Grant is bound by. A genie from Aladdin explains, There are at least two rules a genie must follow. They can only grant a total of three wishes per master, and a wishmaker cannot wish for more wishes. He also throws in that he can't make people fall in love and doesn't like bringing people back from the dead. These rules are fairly standard for modern depictions of genies, but for wish-granting fairies, the consensus seems to be that they can only grant one wish per wishmaker. A more unique example of another Disney wish grant archetype is Grandmother Willow from Pocahontas. Pocahontas doesn't so much make a wish to her, but she makes her desires clear, and instead of giving her what she wants immediately, she gives Pocahontas the advice on how to grant her own wish. Listen with your heart and you will understand. This implies that people have the power to make wishes come true for themselves, which is a lovely sentiment. The fairy that supposedly granted our wishes had a sketchy limit of seven wishes she could hand out. I say sketchy because she brought up the idea of a half wish, which, if you ask me, just sounds made up. She also left, at least with me and Charles, no memory of our wishes being granted, though we know they must have been, since Charles said he felt an overwhelming desire to hug Joey, and I had a massive migraine that suddenly overcame me behind the eyes. The rest of my family say they remember their wishes well, which just adds to the whole confusion of what went on. I know this much. The wish granter archetype is a manipulative jerk. It makes up its own rules to suit it, and doesn't really follow in the footsteps of its predecessors, raising the question of whether who we met was an archetype at all. Also, apparently toes don't come from this realm. Who knew?